everybody, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today. I'm very excited because today is the reveal of the new Simon Says Stamp Stamp September card kit. So this month's kit features some amazing new products that I think you're really going to enjoy and are going to be really fun for creating birthday cards. One of the products that are included in the kit that I'm really excited about is the shaker tags from Julie Bean Soup. So as you can see here, they're just regular tags, but they have something a little bit special about them. They have a window cut into them. And with that window, you can fill it with a shaker well. These shaker wells make shaker cards so easy. You won't believe it. So I used the balloon shape. You get both a balloon and a heart in the kit. I used the balloon to create this really fun shaker card. Isn't this cool? I just love how easy this is to make. Make shaker cards, like I said, an absolute breeze. So I used a bunch of products from the new kit, including the Doodlebug papers, the Doodlebug sprinkles, which are both a great custom mix made especially for this kit. So they're from the fairy tale collection that Doodlebug has recently released, but they're a custom mix of both the papers and the sprinkles, especially made for the kit. I also used the new stamp set from Simon Says Stamp called Best Ever. And I really love some of the fun stuff in this kit, including the cute rainbow striped heart and also the rainbow itself. And then you also have some amazing sentiments and some fun border stamps. So you get a lot of really fun stuff in this stamp set that allow you to make a variety of different things. So I used a bunch of the products to make this cute scene inside of my shaker. And I did a bunch of masking and coloring with some colored pencils. And I'll show you all of the different steps that I took to make this shaker card. And just keep in mind that you could also just make the tag itself and not put it on a card. So just keep that in mind as we're creating this. If you're not into the card but you want to make the tag itself, we can definitely do that. So let's get started. Head on over to my desk and we'll get started in creating the card. And you can see how we can use some of the new fun products in this month's kit. Also keep in mind that there is a card kit gallery over on the Simon Says Stamp blog filled with inspiration from designers who have gotten the kit already and have been making cards with it. Once you get your kit, you can also add to that gallery. So go over to my blog. I have links to that card kit gallery as well as you can find the other card kit galleries from previous months there as well. So I hope you'll check that out and add your cards after you've made something with the new kit there as well. So like I said, let's get started and create the card. All right, so I've got some of the products here that I'm going to be needing to make my card lined up here on my desk. I've got the stamp set. I've also got one of the shaker tags and the shaker wells. And you'll also notice I have a circle die. This circle die is from a Simon Says Stamp nesting circle die set. But I wanted a circle that was going to be just a little bit larger than my balloon so that way I knew what kind of spacing I was going to need to make my scene behind the shaker because I want the scene to be contained inside the shaker so you can see most of it. So I die cut that circle from a piece of white cardstock and now I'm going to start doing some stamping to create my scene. I'm going to do a little bit of masking so I need to start by stamping the cloud that I want in the foreground of my card. So I stamped the cloud with some Your Next Stamp black dye ink. This ink is perfect for using with Copic markers or colored pencils or any other types of coloring mediums. I have found this ink is really great. It does take a couple minutes to dry, but once it dries, it is not going anywhere. And I have not had any trouble with it bleeding when I've been using it with my alcohol markers or with my colored pencils. So I cut out some masks that I had made from some post-it tape and I'm going to attach the mask on top of my cloud and start stamping the rainbow because that's the next piece that's going to be behind the cloud but then also going to be in front of any other elements that I'm adding to my scene. So I'll stamp the rainbow as well and I'll stamp that then over top of my cloud and you'll see that it overlaps but that's why we have the post-it note tape there as the mask because that way it doesn't go into the cloud that we have stamped down onto our scene. I also made a mask for the rainbow and I'm going to now stamp a couple more clouds to finish off the scene. Once I have all of my stamping done, that'll allow me to start working on the coloring. And then as one more final detail and just to make the scene come to life, I stamped one of the little smiling faces onto my cloud as well. Now like I said, I'm going to be coloring with colored pencils today. I wanted to show you first before I get started on the coloring that my favorite pencil sharpener to use with my Prismacolored colored pencils is the Prismacolor Pencil Sharpener. This does sharpen your pencils into a really nice fine tip 
and I find it really helpful for using when I'm going ahead and coloring with my colored pencils because I've not ever had any luck with mechanical pencil sharpeners. I've always found that the manual pencil sharpeners work so much better. And for Prisma colored colored pencils, I really like using this particular one. So I'm going to color in my images here with some colored pencils and I'm using a very light hand to color these in because if you press too hard as you're coloring, you're going to get a waxy buildup and the colors aren't going to blend as well and you're going to see streaks in your coloring. So you need to use a very light hand and as you color over top of each area, you're building up the color and that's going to give you a nice intense but very smooth shading. So you just want to be careful as you're coloring not to press too hard. Another reason that I sharpened my pencils before I started coloring is because I want to make sure that I have some very fine tips on these pencils because the areas that I'm coloring here on these stamped images are very small. So I want to make sure that I can get into those small nooks and crannies and not go outside the lines with my coloring. I'm using a rainbow theme of course to color in the rainbow and as I color this in I'm working with the lightest color first adding in a second color and then bringing in the darkest color. So that allows me to get a nice blend of color between all of these colored pencils. And if you don't have lots of different colors of your colored pencils, you just have a few, just add a really light hand for the first layer of color to be your base coat, so to speak. And then with the, that same pencil, just go back over top in smaller sections to add the shading and just don't color the entire piece with the extra shading that you've added with that same pencil. You can create depth just by layering color of the same uh, pencil and you'll still get some shaded effects. It's not gonna be quite the same, but if you don't have lots of colored pencils, I would definitely encourage you to experiment and see how what kind of shade you can get even with just one. For the clouds, because they're white, of course, I want them to be a very light color. So I'm using two very light blue colors and just adding very small areas of shading along the very edges just to give them a little bit of texture and dimension, but nothing too crazy. Finally, I'm going to color in the sky, and this I wanted to do with Copic markers because I wanted an intense but also very smooth finish, and I got a much faster coloring with the Copic markers on this larger area, so this is why I went with the Copics. But I just used two blue colors. These are BG01 and BG00, and I'm just using that to add a little bit of shading to the sky and add some brilliant blue colors to help make that rainbow and, and clouds pop. So once my coloring was finished, I'm able to put this into my shaker tag and you can see how this is going to end up looking once we start building the card. So I want to attach this scene inside of my shaker and I want to make sure I attach this down nicely with some regular adhesive. Now this is where I kind of wasn't thinking as I was creating. I was so excited about the fact that this was going to go inside of the shaker that I forgot totally that I wanted to add stamping to the front of this tag. So I got to this point and I was like, uh-oh, now I have adhesive on the inside. I can't do any stamping once I add the shaker well on top because that's going to get in the way. What am I gonna do? So, this is the way to get around this. I've added the adhesive on there already. I can't stick it to anything because it'll stick to anything I attach it to. But if you take a page protector and lay their sticky side down onto that page protector so you can do your stamping on the other side, that will allow you to go ahead and remove that once you're ready to go ahead and hear this back together. So I've laid this down and I'm doing my stamping on the other side because again, this is the front side and the two inner pieces are going to be what's attached together. So I can totally lay this down onto my page protector and not have to worry about that adhesive that I accidentally put down too quickly. It's not, it's not going to stick to anything. So that's a great way to get around this and hopefully that's a good tip for you if you find that you've accidentally put adhesive down too quickly, lay it down onto a page protector and it won't stick to it and it'll still stay sticky and you'll be able to go ahead and use it. Now I'm ready to go ahead and attach this down now that I've done some stamping with those border stamps from that Best Day Ever stamp set. You saw me add adhesive around the outer areas of that shaker well so that way I can stick it down in there. I don't know if you necessarily had to do that, but I just like making sure everything's attached. So because I'm a little OCD about those kinds of things, I went ahead and did that and I took the adhesive backing off the back side of the shaker well and smushed my sequins, which are some iridescent hearts from Pretty Pink Posh, inside that shaker well and over top of my scene. And you can see we've got this adorable shaker tag all built and ready to go, and I still think it looks just so cute. You could totally leave it as just a tag and make it, put it on a present or something, 
but I wanted to go ahead and put it on a card. So that's what you're gonna see me do here. I'm starting off by stamping a sentiment from that stamp set, that best day ever set from the card kit. I'm stamping it down onto some of the lavender card stock that's included in the kit to make a little sentiment strip. I'm stamping it in some Simon Says Stamp Clear Ink, and this is going to allow me to heat emboss this with white embossing powder. So I'm just gonna press this down gently with my Misty Stamping Tool because this is a delicate stamp, so I wanna make sure I press it down very gently so I don't have any glops of ink anywhere. So I added the embossing powder and heat set this so I have a nice heat emboss sentiment, and then I'll take it into my Tonic Mini Trimmer and trim this down. I love my Tonic Mini Trimmer. I use this thing all the time for all of my small cutting jobs. So I attached some of the pattern paper from Doodlebug that's included in the kit onto my card base. I used some scallop stitching dies from Simon Says Stamp to add a nice border. And then I put some Simon Says Stamp Fun Foam on the back side of my shaker tag. Now one of my favorite ways to add little embellishments to my tags is to match both ribbon and baker's twine together and tie the ribbon onto the tag using the baker's twine. That creates such a cute little finishing touch and it's a fun way to be able to add some interest to your tags. That Simon Says Stamp Fun Foam is not as thick as the 3M Fun Foam, which was why I used it behind my shakers. I wanted the shaker to have a little bit of dimension, but I didn't want it to be quite as dimensional as the 3M tape. Now the sentiment strip, I did want to have a, have a little bit more extra dimension. So I attached that down with the 3M foam tape and I just pressed that down right in the center there. And sometimes you just feel like there, it needs something. And I felt that this card needed that just little something. So I decided I'll take some Nouveau drops in colors that match that pattern paper, the polka dots, and cover a random assortment of the polka dots with different colors of the Nouveau drops. And I can't tell you how fun this looks once it's dried and you've added the Nouveau drops onto just certain dots on the paper, not all of them, just certain ones. It just added such a really fun dimensional aspect to the pattern paper. I just loved it. And I think it really creates a fun texture too when you, you're touching the card and you feel this, these bumps on it. It just is kind of like, wow, this is a really neat piece of pattern paper. So kind of experiment when you're creating with your pattern papers, see what kind of fun things you can add to them. You can really make your pattern papers come to life by just doing something as simple as adding those Nouveau drops. Okay, so I hope that this video has been inspiring for you in learning some fun tips, also learning how to use some of the products that are included in the Simon September card kit. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video and watching this shaker tag come to life. If you enjoyed, I hope you will subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more inspiration from me. I post new videos every week. And you can also find me on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and YouTube, as well as my blog. Thanks for watching. I will see you again very soon. Have a great day. Bye.